Welcome to worship today as we celebrate All Saints Sunday. It is good to be with you. As a reminder, we will worship again outdoors, in person, weather permitting, next Sunday, November the 8th at noon. On Sunday, November 15th, we will worship online only as we will have our congregational meeting. You will receive more information about the congregational meeting in the coming days. May you experience God's presence with you today and throughout the week. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. We join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. For when the saints who from the labors rest, who faith before the world confessed thy name O Jesus be forever blessed Alleluia Alleluia Thou west the rock the fortress and the might the Lord the Cat in the well-fought fight. Now in the darkness drew the one true light. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, bless communion, fellowship. 
worship divine We feebly struggle they in glory shine Yet all are one in thee For all are thine Alleluia Alleluia And when the strife is fierce The warfare long Stills on the ear The distant triumph song And hearts are brave Again and arms are strong The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who was seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. When I think about saints, I often think of famous saints like St. Saint Francis of Assisi, St. Teresa, St. Augustine, and St. Patrick. There are churches and schools and hospitals who bear their names. But there are saints all around us, and there have been saints throughout our lives. As part of our Lutheran understanding and identity, we believe that all become saints in the waters of our baptism. We live our lives in the nuance of both and. Luther described Christians as simultaneously saint and sinner. And so today we give thanks to God for all of the saints who have gone before us and all that they have given to us and to the church and to the world. And we remember that we too are saints, that none of us know saint is perfect. Rather, we are all children of God. And God works through us to bring about God's kingdom and God's presence among us. In our gospel today, we hear more about God's kingdom and how God sees and acts in the world and in our lives. We heard the familiar words of the Beatitudes in the gospel of Mark. Jesus, seeing all of the people, goes up the mountain with the disciples where he taught them. I have this image of my mind from the Lion King where Mufasa takes his son Simba up the, to a place where they can look out over all of the land and he gives words of wisdom to his son. I envision Jesus there with the disciples looking out at all the crowds who had gathered, the crowds of people who were on the fringes of society, the ones overlooked by the religious elite in the Roman Empire. And we hear these words from Jesus, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who persecute, who are persecuted on my account, for they will be comforted. They will inherit the earth. They will be called children of God. We're reminded again today with Jesus on that mountain that God's ways are not the world's ways, that God's expectations are not the world's expectations, that God's demands, they are not the world's demands. And I can just envision Jesus there on the mountain giving new vision to the disciples, trying to help them understand this new reality that God is creating and bringing forth in their presence. See, God always pays attention to those who are left behind, left behind by the powers of this world. God is always on the side of the underdog and is concerned about those who are overlooked or pushed aside by everyone else. Not just in the future, but God is engaged in paying attention to people living right now. And God calls us, saints like you and me and those all around us, to look out for people who are pushed aside and taken advantage of. And that is what I see Jesus doing on that mountain. You and I, we aren't on a mountain with Jesus, but we gather together to learn with Jesus, to have our vision changed, to see the world through God's eyes rather than the perspective of the world. We can look out and see so much brokenness. We can assign blame and cast people to the side, or we can participate in having our vision changed so that we can see people, including ourselves, even for just a moment, as God sees. On this All Saints Sunday, may we remember that saints aren't perfect, but through the waters of baptism are called and sent to be God's people in a broken and hurting world. May we begin again today to live by a different set of standards and see the people of this world with a different set of lenses, knowing that there will be a time when we will all be gathered with all of the saints who have gone before, before us, those who are among us now and all who will come after us, when brokenness and death will be no more and we will be whole in God's presence. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
We confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today is the day when we remember with thanksgiving the saints who have died in Christ and whose baptism is complete. It's a day we celebrate Christ's victory over death and give thanks for the new life we each have because of Jesus. In our prayers, we ask that God would grant them eternal rest and that we would be kept in communion with all the saints until we are reunited with them around the heavenly throne of God and the Lamb. Let us pray. O God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor, and you are the rest for those who have died. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have died, and especially those most dear to us who now rest in you. We remember members of Holy Trinity who have joined the company of saints this year. Carol and Neil Dent, Paula Fusello, Turtle Hickey, Edie Hanchen, John Kummerer, Richard Mitchell, and Ruth Snell. We remember loved ones who have joined the company of saints throughout the years. Donald and Ellie Moore, Sandy Lynn Delaney, Rita Doyle, Richard Clower, Robert Flood, Ralph Hirsch, Albert and Melva Yerkes, Carol Teresa Imbergia, Alice Fowler, Jay Wright, Sylvia Mills, Hank Rakowski, Bill Henderson, Alice Boland, Bill Ray, Rosella Adelsberg, Fred Mills, Michael J. Cresson Pardo, Grace Hall, Judy Leister, Kimberly Ann Probst, Dorothy Laxton, Eleanor Evans, Susan Sweeney, Harry N. Crichton, Martha McClowski, all of those who have died for whom we do not know their names, and all who died from COVID-19. A reading from Revelation. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs, who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists conservationists and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, 
guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, those we name on our lips and in the silence of our hearts. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The golden evening brightens in the west. Soon, soon to faithful servants cometh rest. Sweet is the call. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. God is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>